<laughs> hey, it's Kevin and Fred. Do you have a referral for us here in Phoenix? There are 30,000 agents here that you could send them to. Why us? Well, for one thing, we'll keep you updated and you'll never have to track down your commission. We'll also make you look really good to your client. And best of all, it helps us keep all this content free. So go to kevinandfred.com slash referral to make the introduction. We'll take great care of them. All right, welcome back to the Kevin and Fred show. This time I am joined uh, by my friend and the elusive, if you will, Justin Martin. Justin, what's going on, brother? Man, just a, a great day here in Colorado. Uh, as I shared earlier, excited to, to be on the show and see you again. And it's been too long, but I remember the first time that we met and uh, just uh, very rewarding to spend some more time again. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, so you and I met, funny story enough, because you run an independent brokerage in Colorado. Um, we met actually at my company's uh, annual conference or one of them in Vegas last year. What is, I want to say that was October, if I remember correctly, right? In, yep. in Las Vegas at, uh, at the EXP Realty um, Convention. And we connected, had, I remember we had lunch there with uh, you, me and Fred and, uh, and Aaron and Sean and a few other friends. And um, you and I just connected. I was like, man, that, that dude's really cool. I, I definitely want to connect with him again. So we've stayed in touch. And luckily, I finally was able to pin you down and able to get you on the, on the podcast. Yeah, you know, for a lot of people, I think everybody can relate right now. Everybody's working harder than they ever have had to, I'm guessing. That's what it's felt like for me uh, in preparation for many things. One, just running a business. I mean, nobody saw this coming. You hope that you were prepared for it. I know that, uh, you know, the, uh, what was it? The business oxygen article that, you know, kind of resprung getting you and I back on the show. I love that one so much about being in the position to find success and how important cash flow was. And I'm very fortunate and thankful that, you know, uh, you're right. You know, we ran a successful business. We were ready for this, but I don't think I was ready for what it was, how hard it was going to be to get through it. And the memories of Vegas, man, so much stuff, you know, just one learning about EXP. I remember sitting at that lunch. Curtis was there too, you know, so there oh, was, there, yep. Yeah. <laughs> There were so many amazing people at that lunch, and I just remember spending time with Michael and, and the amount of great leaders there, though. John Cheplak, you know, the, the, everybody. What an environment. And I just, I, it's, it's my association and connection to you. It's what my only memory is until now. We've got the podcast and everything that you do, but uh, I miss Vegas, man. I miss, <laughs> I miss those type of environments. And, uh, you know, it was very, very rewarding to see, you know, what EXP was doing then. And I think all of us can learn, you know, in the hybrid virtual work world, I think that the whole entire world has had to adopt to now. So, um, man, great times meeting you there. And I, like I said, I, I miss the faces and, and gosh, I miss Vegas, man. <laughs> Me too, man. I'm a, I'm a Vegas guy. And, and uh, you know, this is definitely putting a cramp in my style. Uh, this, this will air this episode not, not too long down the road, but um, we're recording it just for context, May 6th, 2020. And we are, you know, so you're in, you're in Colorado and you guys are kind of now what in week two of sort of like the beginning to go back to whatever normal is, or, or kind of reopening Phoenix or, uh, Arizona where I'm at. Um, we are effectively step one of that is next week is, is just yeah. a couple of days away. Uh, and it kind of already starts to feel like it. So that's why we're, we're, you know, we're kind of talking about some of these weird times because it feels like the last two months lasted two years is really what it really, what it feels like. Yes. Um, and it's just been, yeah, man, it's, it's been crazy times. And I miss, I miss going to Vegas too. I just miss being around people. And, you know, we were supposed to have our conference a couple of weeks ago, next, next level right. it's live 2020. And ultimately we had to postpone that to next year. Um, and so, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm missing that, but I'm glad we get to talk, dude, because one of the things I'll never forget. So we're sitting there at lunch and, you know, we're grilled. I feel bad for you. Cause like, here you are, you're the outsider at, at a table full of EXP agents. Nonetheless, like if yep. there is a group of people that recruit they're like, and then like, if you could put gasoline on that, it's, they're all at EXP. Right. And so, oh, yeah. and you're the one you're in the middle and here we are and we're peppering you and like, and I'm learning about your business and dude, you're sharing with me like the way your business has grown on the real estate side. And then, then you drop on me the fact that you've got a mortgage business too. And now I'm like even more engrossed in, in what you're doing. And like, I want to know what you know. So I'm excited to kind of dig into that. And I get to pepper you and put, put you on the hot seat now, just one-on-one -on -one without having, you know, 10 other people at the table with me. 
So I'm right. excited. I'm excited for that because I know I, I've got a lot I can learn from you, and um, you know, I'd love to hear about your past too because you you obviously you've got a business past prior yep. to real estate. I want to say it was 24 hour fitness. Is that right? Yeah, decade in uh, the fitness industry. Yeah, and so so what? Tell me about that because I remember thinking you mentioned it when we were at lunch, and I remember thinking, well, that's an interesting background. Um, what like what did you do for them? Just give me a, just kind of give me an idea of business, and then I'd love to talk about that transition into yeah. whenever you decided to hop, jump into real estate. Yeah, you know it's very relatable because I also spent a decade rolling burritos and working my way up from a dishwasher, which was my first job at Zteca, which is actually Qdoba now. It's Chipotle for a lot of places that don't have a Qdoba or Moe's, you know, down south, and a decade there. Uh, moved me into some some management supervisor positions, and there was a gentleman. His name's Chris Smith. He uh, CEO of Nash Fitness in Canada now, and he would come through, and he would take you know the managers to lunch to do their performance reviews. And there I was, there's this young kid. You know, I was going through college uh, to be an engineer, which is what all my family does. Yes, man. <laughs> you almost got to just your face says it all. You know, yeah. lo love my family. I got to rep my little brothers, Clemson University. I always try to try to, they're, you know, they're, they're good guys, but they're, that you know, not not the industry that I needed to be in. And, uh, you know, he, he kept coming through and said, what are you doing here? You know, you're always excited, positive. And that's a mindset I learned from my father, you know, just work hard, doesn't matter what job you're doing is, you know, put in the time and, and, and be positive. And so, I can't say that that's naturally who I was, but that's who I was at work, you know, and it's not the most luxurious if you can imagine, you know, dating or, you know, a, let's just call it a resume on a podcast. So tell me more about yourself. Oh man, I'm a supervisor, you know, at a fast food restaurant, right? So, it, but it was the start. And so he, uh, he recruited hard and uh, just kept saying, Hey, I think you need to come over, you know, manage trainers for us. I got this fitness manager trainee role. I was actually the second fitness manager trainee position at 24 hour fitness. So they created a kind of a, a position to bring people on to manage the personal training staffs and 24 hour fitness. If a lot of people don't know, or let's just call it health clubs in general, most of their profit margins are made in electronic fund transfers, the, the monthly memberships, right? But then they also, back to what we talked about today, just you know, building a brand, building a business, is you have to have a why, you have to have a heartbeat. There has to be something deeper than just the profit. And the purpose in the health clubs is obviously people achieving fitness goals, right? And that's you know, personal trainers, just like real estate agents and, and brokerage margins is you want good ones, you're gonna have to pay for them. <laughs> to keep them, you got to keep paying, right? And, uh, you know, so just there, I hope I can kind of bring context to, well, how does that relate to running, you know, a real estate, you know, business is that it's baked in the margins of having profit, enough cash flow, like we were talking about in the business oxygen article, you know, some type of why or service that you're delivering to your clients, or, you know, or something bigger to your business. And that's what personal training was. So they had a uh, opportunity and I jumped on it and after my training program, they moved me out to St. Louis and I blew it. It was remarkable. <laughs> my first leadership job in an industry I didn't know. And so what did I do? I moved all of the lockers with the seasoned veterans into the room with the rookies because I read leadership books. Oh, and man, man we're going to work together as a team. They revolted, and so this is just sharing again. Real estate. Any team leader can understand what it's like getting promoted from agent to team leader, and now what competencies are really required to lead a real estate team are very similar to how do you lead a fitness team. And so uh, they moved me back to Colorado, and that was a, a great learning and leadership <laughs> 101. And uh, but from there, I had the opportunity to uh, to fail, try, succeed and ultimately become, you know, a multi-unit leader there and oversaw the state of Colorado. And it's actually where I, I met a business partner of mine who, you know, both in real estate and then another business partner that, you know, ended up joining us in mortgage. So yeah, it was a decade in fitness, so relatable to real estate and uh, the transition, how did it happen was, uh, I think everybody can relate to this. I uh, had four children, I was sitting there with my wife, I was 32 years old. And I said, is this my future? This is the, the rest of our life. I'm going to be a multi-unit operator for a large corporate company. 
uh, you know, have to spend a lot of time around things like EEOC and, you know, diversity and inclusions and just all the challenges that I appreciate a lot more now after being a, a sole proprietor broker owner. But at the time, not having walked in those shoes, you know, you just start asking, is this the life I want to have? And my wife, man, I got to, you know, if I'm on a podcast, I got to send a shout out to her because I sat there. I remember talking to her after about two years, it took me to make the decision though. My business partner knows because we were there and I said, hey, I think I got to leave, but I'm going to give it a year. I want to see if I feel the same way in a year because life is good. Got a good thing going here. And at the end of that year, I wasn't convicted enough to leave. That I just gave it one more year. So it was actually a two-year exit that I had to build enough momentum to know from 30 to about 32 that, hey, this just wasn't the example of a father I wanted to give to my son. So I got a 13-year-old daughter. And uh, at that time, I had learned that the only thing she cares about is her dad's love. It has nothing to do with the money I make. has nothing to do with anything. And you've got two kids. So start learning these things around what do the kids really need? And so at that time and age, I realized she just, she needed her dad's love. Then I realized my sons, after buying them Christmas presents and other things, and then playing with boxes instead of the toys, I realized, man, money don't mean nothing to these kids either. And so, you know, take rewind five and a half years ago, April 4th was my uh, five year anniversary, you know, in starting our companies and, uh, and leaving the uh, fitness world. And at that time, it was just the right time for my family to make a selfish move. You know, one where you're making good money, you've got a great life, and but you just want to go jump on something that uh, I remember almost crying to my wife, man. And actually, I did. I brought tears in because I said, hey, you support this. Even if you got to sell the home, we got to move into a condo. Because, you know, if you read and do your due diligence in the likelihood of succeeding in real estate as opposed to the it's optimism. Low. It's low. Look, man, I'm a business operator. I ran P&L. So it was just like, okay, even though I think we're good, I think we might, you know, it might take us longer than we think. And, and she, just, she just said, hey, honey, I'm in. And at that moment, I knew it was real. I knew I was gonna have to go talk to my district manager, who's a great leader from Starbucks and other companies and tell them, hey, I'm out. And, uh, and after a decade of relationship building in a very intimate arena, which is health and fitness and wellness and stories of, you know, just the life and dreams people want to have, um, it, uh, it was the right time. It was uh, amazing. And it was in 2014, the rise of internet leads. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, okay. So, so I want to talk, I want to go there for a second. Uh, but yep. before we do, it's funny you talk like what I found in um, a friend and kind of mentor to me uh, by the name of Joe Polish often has said to me many times, like success traps are the hardest ones to get out of. Like it's, it's easy when you have nothing, when you have totally failed and you're on your ass, it's kind of easy. I, like, I don't want to discount how hard that can be, especially emotionally, but it's easy to get out of that trap. It, when, yep. you, when things are good and just good enough or like slightly better than good, like where, where right. you were at, you like you, you're actually making good money. Oh, yeah. um, that is really hard. Most people, my experience, I found never get out of that. Like, though, like, you know, anybody who has a good business usually has a hard time making it a great business, right? Uh, because those success traps are just so strong. And so I think num the fact that number one, at that age, you, I wasn't, I was relatively similar age. I was 29. Yeah, I was 29 when I got my license. So not, not too much younger than what you were when you made your decision. And man, it's hard. It is really hard to kind of give up. It, it's one thing if it's just you, right? Depending on your, your personal tolerance for risk, but like, you know, kids and a wife, like I had a wife or I was engaged anyways at the time. Um, and we were, you know, later got married, but it's, it's, that's a hard thing, man. So hats off to you to be able to make that tough decision. And obviously it's paid off, man, because he, here we are. So five years, tell us, just give us the idea. Yeah. Like what is your business made up of? Tell me about, um, I homes and I, you know, is it, I'm going to totally butcher the name of your mortgage company. I, I homes and I loans. Is that right? It's actually move mortgage. So move mortgage. It originally, okay. yeah, it started out as I loans, but then, you know, we understood that, uh, there's gonna be different platforms and models and having them separate companies is the best thing for the companies, but we understand they'll support the companies as, uh, relationships, you know, help one another. Cool. So did you, so you own a mortgage company, in a, an independent real estate brokerage as well. 
do did you start them both like simultaneously or was one first and then the other yeah you know um i wanted to get through just an introduction of who i was pretty quick because i think there's so much good content that we can deliver today you know so been in the business for five years business coach for tom ferry we have three companies here locally in colorado mortgage insurance and real estate we help over 1500 families a year you know between the three and um what I'm most proud of though, Kevin, man, and, and this is the part where I hope if we could rewind or just play a 60 second clip, it was that moment of success, meaning getting farther than most people ever do in a corporate career. But I looked at a company trusting me with their million dollar portfolio. I gotta be able to believe in myself. So hopefully people with limited beliefs, just man, believe in yourself. If you've done some of the things already, don't let those doubts be there. If you haven't done them, you have to go with cautious, you know, optimism. But at the same time is I just looked at the example of fatherhood. You know, my sons, what are they going to learn more from? Me staying in a safe job or making the most scary, terrifying decision, selfish decision as a man, as an individual, as a husband. And if I failed, man, the rebound from that is probably the best lesson I could have taught three sons. And that's where I hope people take that to just say, hey, don't let success, you know what I mean? Ease is the greatest threat to progress, right? As Denzel says. So it's funny. I'll, I'll share this. Um, I, there's a, so I've studied copywriting and marketing a lot over the last few years. And one of the, one of the greatest copywriters of all time is a guy by the name of Gary Halbert. And one of his sons bond is his name. His, um, he tells a story about how, so Gary, for those, for those people who don't know, and I'll make this very quickly. He's, he made it, he would always make money, lose money, make money, lose money. So he would go from making millions and millions and millions to spending it all, throwing it all away, being down in the dumps. Like, and apparently that happened a few times uh, right. in, in his lifetime. So his oldest son, there's a pretty big gap between his first son and his second son. So when his second son was like to the age of like learning from his dad, like professionally learning from him, he was broke. Like he was starting over again. And he always said like, that was actually a bigger advantage. He had told his dad that like, I feel like I'm at a better advantage right now than his son, his oldest son's name happened to be Kevin. Um, than Kevin was because I, you've already made it. I get to watch you start again from the bottom and learn how you can, how you're going to come out of this. And of course he came right. out of it. He's like the greatest copywriter of all time. Um, right. The guys made, he made millions and millions. He's, he's unfortunately passed since. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, man, exactly. Like we learn so much from falling on our face, which I think yep. is one of the reasons why from time to time, we got to be willing to totally fail. Yeah. And sometimes give so much to the progression that you don't know the hardships that will come. And that's one of the things I love about what you and Fred are doing. It's what I actually love about EXP. You know, I'm deep in the, the Tom Ferry ecosystem last five years. You got the Whistle Group. You got Nazaroff, you got Tammy Pack. I mean, dude, you got some of the biggest businesses and leaders in the EXP community. And that's what I've loved the most that they've done is how much they've come together to help one another. And I think we're in the world now of giving. And, you know, you asked, well, so how'd you start all these things is, you know, it first started with about three months in my old job and doing a business plan and saying, what do you do at a time like this? So it's 2015. You know, where's real estate headed? And I don't know if you've read a report called the Danger Report, but NAR published a report called the Danger Report, and we built our entire company around it. So we said, okay, can't be marginal. We just got to hire people who will quit their job tomorrow and work full time. You got to overcome that risk, you know? And then we said, all right, let's focus on buyers. It looks like the profit margins are higher for newer agents on buyers. There's a decrease in this iBuyer listing commission platform that a lot of people the squeeze on listing commissions, and then talk about the rise of teams. And so my business partner had been with Keller Williams, right? And he said, hey, you know, and, and I know great company. I don't ever want to say anything negative about any company, but he said they touted this world-class training program. That, that's what I was supposed to get. And some people get it. And just like our company, we still fail at many things, right? Is some people don't. Unfortunately, he was one of the ones that didn't. And so he owned a, a motel. He was an investor at the time. And there was a gentleman who sold that to him who ran a, a local brokerage here, had been doing it for about 30 years, and he ended up going to work for him. So when we first started our company, we DBA'd iHomes Colorado under you know, federal real estate here locally, Jerry Reiner. And I got to thank him, man, because you know, without his guidance as a new agent, 
I, well, what else did I do? I signed up for Joshua Smith's 90 day boot camp. Just being real, man. Like, yeah, man. The, the dude, it was I'm brand new. So what do you do? Okay. I got my business plan. Okay. We go off the danger report. Perfect. All right. How are we, you know, Joshua Smith is going to teach me how to talk, what to do. And then, you know, I studied Tom Ferry's eight levels of performance and he talked about four core lead sources. And so I said, okay, we got family and friends, got sphere, got this other stuff. And so we started doing online lead reviews and coming from a sales background, I think anybody understands this. When you read a review of agents bashing something and saying, yeah, if you want to call somebody five times, then it's a good lead. And I was like, five calls for $14,000? Sign me up. <laughs> Dude, right? And so that was just, the, the hard part is, it, you know, Tom always talked 80% to your mind, right? It's, it's your mindset. And so, you know, I just went after that and said, okay, we got to a company, direct response marketing and branding. And we went with those two all in and, uh, and create a onboarding you know, for new agents. And uh, our first year, we hired about 11 people, all from 24 Hour Fitness, all right? Nice. And, yep, and uh, that didn't go well with my relationship with my old business partner, who's now my business partner in mortgage. I'll get there in the story, it's beautiful, man. But, uh, you know, they said, well, you can't work out in these clubs no more, man, because every time you come here, you're just telling people about this new vision and what you're doing and whatnot. But as a company owner, just like you said, EXP, great recruiters at the table, look, you're a team leader, you're right, you got to be able to sell that vision, right? And so yep. I'm in there, you know, telling these stories, what we're doing, how we're helping. And so um, our average age in our first year closed 17 homes, with no real estate experience, all 11 of them. Damn. Yep. And so it was taken, you know, a lot of the principles that Josh taught, a lot of principles that, um, you know, we learned in the sales game at 24 Hour Fitness. And uh, the other part too, is a lot of the principles around Jordan Belfort's, you know, emotional, logical sales training, Chris Keir, you know, Chris, uh, what's his name, the curator code or whatever, right? And he talked about knowledge, respond, pivot. So we just built scripts for everything and uh, train people in the first two years. I think we went from, you know, when, before we hired our team, 68 transactions between me and my buddy, my business partner. And then, you know, the second year was 168 and it was, you know, 200, then it was 300 and you know, last year was 468 transactions. And, you know, two years into this, we ended up outgrowing our mortgage partners, you know, and that's one of the challenges is if they're not scaling, and this is, you know, I think probably one of the hardest parts for real estate agents in general, how do you predict scale? And ultimately, like you said, in the business oxygen, how do you make sure you got the right margins for profit? So that way, whether it's COVID, whether it's anything, you still, you know what I mean, are ready for it business-wise, emotionally, absolutely not. Not yeah. emotionally ready for this at all. Business-wise, though, we just followed, you know, practices from the best. And our companies, you know, were not highly leveraged and, you know, sat on cash and just, you know, long-term play. So we started the mortgage company about two years ago. Uh, and that was just due to the fact of outgrowing some of our business partners in mortgage. And, you know, as we had some really amazing conversations with them, they, they just said, hey, honestly, Justin, Isaac, we're not going to be able to do it, man. Uh, I just, that's not our model. We're not ready to take on, you know, this many, you know, you're going to need to find a new partner and you know this and I think everybody knows this. It's hard to find a great mortgage partner who both is in for the experience of the client. You know what I mean? Knowing that we were the referrer, then also, Hey, I understand you have cues and the things you need to do. And so we started, you know, trying to find a partner, couldn't find one, stumbled upon joint venture opportunities or whatnot. And then that didn't seem good at all. And we met a, a, a independent mortgage broker. And that was the key to United Wholesale Mortgage and Quicken. And once we started learning that model, we said, whoa, I think that's an amazing model. And anybody who's been doing real estate for a long time, I know the independent mortgage brokerages, you know, used to give kind of bad service. So they kind of got a bad rap. But over the last five years, they've really been working on, hey, how do we streamline an amazing service? And, uh, you know, the nice part about United Wholesale Mortgage and Quicken during COVID is that's a lot of money. So they're not impacted like a lot of our traditional retail lenders. And so there wasn't too much adjustment outside of, you know, a lot of the things that just we can't predict during COVID. And so uh, the mortgage company started that way. And a year into it, I hired, uh, recruited, and man, without him, uh, we would have never grown from, you know, nine transactions a month to I think we got 47 on the books next month. And 
Wow. Uh, his name's uh, Michael Mogadam, who was uh, a regional president at 24 Hour Fitness, and then he worked uh, with Brom at Lifetime Fitness. And so the story of all this, I'm a big partnership guy. I really believe in, in, in partnerships and partners. If you're looking for some of the other things in life, and for me, uh, one of those is the time with the kids. I live on a private lake community, man. I like to boat. I like to jujitsu. I like to do, you know, other things outside of business. And so it's a, a long-term infinite mindset towards how do you just get better in business and how do you get better with relationships? And that's one, if we talked about the failures though, is the number one area that we've failed over the last five years is learning how to grow through relationships. And, you know, we've had some other real estate brokerages in the state of Colorado that I wish we were all still together because I look at what this powerhouse would be with us. You know, there's a couple other teams that are 100 million sales volume, 150 million sales volume that were part of that. Let's call it original, uh, original 11 that we hired that first year. So I'm just glad that they're kicking ass, man. And I think that's probably the biggest thing for all of this is we're in it together. And as long as people find success, uh, you know, good things happen, I think, to all of us. So hope that shares a little bit more just around the real estate and then, you know, how the mortgage came about. Yeah, man. So tell, so tell me, um, cause he, I find it interesting that you just, that you, that your thought process was, Hey, I'm having a hard time keep it, having my lender keep up with me. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start exploring a joint venture slash basically my own thing. Right. Uh, most, I think most of us think, well, maybe I'll just get a second preferred lender, right? Or I'll go find a new one that has more capacity. Because just like agents, lenders are also not created equal. I've got friends in, in the lending business that, you know, I've got a buddy whose team is going to close $75 million, they closed $75 million last month on the right. lending side, right? And then I know other lenders that closed like five loans last month, right? Just same thing as with agents, right? You've got different scale of teams. Yep. I think most of us think like, oh, maybe I'll go add another lender and kind of have a second person. Um, but it tells me that you're looking at more than just like what the average person is looking at when your thought process goes to you, well, maybe we should start our own business here and, and, and work to service it from that standpoint. Like, can you, can you pinpoint why did you, why you thought about that? Of course. In fact, we didn't want to do it. It was to exhaustion. The reason why is always talk about, hey, in business, you got these cornerstones, you know, and, and Tom shared it a lot for the last five years for me. But really, when you look at, you have to be able to sell yourself, a company, and a product or a process. Those things are what get people to a certain place. If you're always just selling only yourself, you're missing these other components that people identify with. And so we built our company with a mission statement. We built it with core values, which are our North Star. And every decision during that five-year operating agreement, we said, hey, how does this align with our business strategy, our core values, our mission statement, and ultimately, man, just who do we serve? And that's the agent. You know, I'm thankful I don't run our real estate you know, company anymore, but I get to oversee and be a huge contributor to keep in those values and beliefs, you know, um, you know, uh, continuing. But the reality is you, you listen to your, your customer and to us as the team leader, man, the experience that's expected of a real estate agent with their lender is what actually led us, meaning it wasn't the money at all because we had visions of being a mega real estate company. And what it was, was, and it's not that our, our partner did anything wrong. He, she, they did everything they could. It just, if their vision for their company was not matching ours, yep. that's where partnerships go bad. And that's totally. why I say I'm a big partnership guy because I like the challenge of what that helps me as a father, as a husband, and learning from the relationships I failed over the last five years. You know, the business partnerships that I, I wish I had now. And so what happened was when we just looked at, you know, our core values and our pillars to how we were going to deliver service to, you know, our agents. And then, you know, ultimately the client is it just, it couldn't, you know? And so the nice part was in partnership and you get this, I mean, if it was just Kevin without Fred, you know what I mean? You just, you look at the things that can't be done. And so, yep. and this is one of the hardest ones is it's not easy. So I will tell 90% of the world who's listening to me say that I think a hundred percent of teams should open up ancillary companies, weird stats there, right? I'm just saying it's not for 90% of you. For and the sure. reason being the risks, and I'm talking about huge regulation, risks, jail time, right? I mean, we're talking, it's, it's not Dora slapping you on the wrist with a little, hey, you got to go to continue education and, you know, 
talk to your employee broker next time you submit a contract. I mean, it is huge money, huge risk. And so my business partner that we started our company with, I'll tell you, man, it wasn't easy. Him exiting two years into our real estate, you know, oh, sorry, I lost my uh, ear. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I guess so. Gotcha. Cool. Is uh, two years in him leaving, man, that was hard. You know what I mean? Without the succession there. And I'm thankful for everybody who stepped up, but also what he endeared in learning regulations, the pressures of zero experience, you know what I mean? Man, hats off to him. And ultimately though, that's why at that point, a year into it, we said, hey, this is making us some little bit of good money. You know what I mean? But the difference between five to 10 deals compared to 50 is we got to turn this into a company. And so we knew, hey, based on you know experience level and other things, just goes back to what I hope to be one day is some type of serial business entrepreneur and have tons of relationships with people all around the world is, uh, you know, you go connect with the best. And so I kept uh, chiming with my buddy from, you know, 24 fitness who kicked me out of the clubs. And <laughs> I mean, we, we hated each other for a period of time, but we, we had so much love and man, you know, I talking to him before I jump on this call, Hey, decided to go talk to Kevin again. And, you know, he knows, and I think you remember me talking about him at the, uh, you know, the EXP conference is just, surrounding yourself with amazing people. And so he's brought a lot of the expansion that he had at Lifetime Fitness. I think we brought on uh, three LOs yesterday. We got three more starting next month. And, you know, you just have to really, uh, this is the hardest part I think about real estate and mortgage, right? And Kevin, you probably speak to this is it's a year of learning minimum. Then you go to the year of earning. Then you're hoping you get some consistency and it's same in your individual real estate as your business. And if totally. you can catch that momentum, you know what I mean? It's like compounding interest, meaning we didn't try to go big in the beginning. We didn't even tell our team about the mortgage company because we, we didn't want them to use us, our, our mortgage company, because they thought the owners were going to get something from it until we had a value proposition that was, hey, we've got the, we call it the perfect offer, right? How you structure the perfect offer with your lender, you know, and dates and deadlines, price terms and provisions align. And then once you have a product, now you can introduce your company. And so it took us, you know, about nine months before we started getting our team going. And you know, we spent a lot of time with Zillow, piloted their Zillow offer program out here last year. And one of the things that was interesting is we talked about, uh, what was it, uh, um, the uh, conversion from the amount of, you know, deals you do in your real estate to your mortgage. And, you know, for 2019, we were about 64%, you know, so we did about 370 transactions that, that first year and solid 64% of them, you know, were connected, you know together but again product process without these steps you know what i mean that are best for the consumer and your client can't just do it for the profit man and that's the one thing that if anybody knows me they know that uh, uh it's like uh the joker and batman right he says this town deserves a better criminal and then he lights all that millions on fire you know because of his principle around you know what it is and for me man it's about about growing some relationships and and being great at what you do hopefully and then the money comes right and uh it didn't start coming until about year 4 or 5 you know <laughs> it took quite a bit of time to start seeing seeing the profits go so uh hopefully that explains a little bit of 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 why that worked it does um let, let me ask you this man like what is your average like what's your day look like what do you, you mentioned you're not running the real estate team day to day um or the real estate company day to day like what what does your kind of average daily activities look like? Yeah. You know, so uh, Dennis Yu is a good friend of mine, digital marketer. And uh, I met him about three years ago when I was trying to learn more about Facebook and, you know, um, who is it? Uh, Justin Nelson, right? And Sphere Rocket, you know, the virtual assistants, man. If anybody hasn't watched the one that you guys did, they need to watch it. Oh, dude, he crushed it. We recorded that last week. Yeah, he crushed it. It's just talking to him. Assistance is what we're all missing. I look to partnership for assistance in growing companies, you know, and these are the things that some people say, well, you know, I'm not good being a partner. Okay. Then you know who you are, you know what I mean? Then, then don't have a partner, but everybody needs assistance. And so, you know, as you look at, Hey, how's the day look is the same thing. It, you got your highest and best use of time. I really believe there's two hours a day that get 80% of it done. And we know that, when it, if you wanted to, I remember in 15, 16 to fund our company, a business partner said, Hey, you're just going to work on listings. I said, ah, I don't know how to sell homes. He said, yeah, no more buyers. You give me the buyers and you're going to become a listing specialist for our company. And man, that was the last time I've been afraid. That really was like, 
what if I fail, man? Like we're in this new company. You're telling me I'm going to go target listings. And uh, you know, I, I listed about a hundred properties in that 18 months. And that's what we used to fund a lot of, you know, the other things that we did. And he took on the employee brokerage. He took on contracts. So it goes back to your schedule should be dictated, you know, when and where are you doing things based on, you know, let's call it your quarterly plan. Right. And I, yeah. I like the 90 days break it down monthly. So, you know, my day starts with, uh, uh, I go outside, I drink a cup of coffee. I stare out over our lake. Uh, I'll make this one quick. Cause some people might be like, why is this guy talk the way he does? My wife got breast cancer two years ago and we're three and a half years into this journey. And you gave up everything for it. Seven days a week, nights and weekends. And you said, but at five, I'll finally live life. And I realized that finite mindset, man, when my wife got diagnosed with breast cancer, it made me realize how much more those relationships mattered. Meaning some of those partners I had that we were so focused on growing our company for the betterment of everybody. I mean, sometimes probably just needed to slow down and think more infinite mindset of, God, this is a guy or a gal that you don't want to lose that relationship with. And that's what led me to become a business coach for Tom Ferry. I'd learned so much through all these people and I wanted to start having more people have some of the things we have. And I'm not saying that we've done anything special by any means, but man, I, I got 99 problems. My happiness level is like 110%, you know, and, and that's what I want people to have. And, and once you start making these monumental decisions, plus backing them by, you know, good cornerstones of business practices, which take years if you didn't have management or, you know, C-level experience in corporate companies, but in due time, you know what I mean? We're all going to look back and go, what were the memories? Just like the EXP conference. My wife asked me, hey, what do you got? And I said, man, remember that trip to Vegas? And why we go to Vegas so much, Kevin, is there's a place called Cocoon out there. It's a, a water treatment facility. And my wife likes to go there for the, the baths. And it's supposed to help you with highly oxygenated you know, system, which can help, you know, obviously with diseases. And so her and I was just looking at how do we go live life? And so to put this full circle and answer your question, Dennis, you taught me these triangles around learn, do, teach. And so I said, you know what? That's where I'm the happiest, man. I realize if I'm just out there doing, selling all the time, maybe I can make more money, but I'm not happy. You know what I mean? When I'm learning, you know what I mean? I, I'm in a you know, coaching program. I'm, I'm in something else. It's like absorbing it. I just signed up for the Grant Cardone like mentorship program. It's so funny hearing him talk about pitches and stuff and you're just like man that's some strong stuff right there okay so it's you know part of it's learning and then the teaching though is probably the most rewarding part so yeah. wake up have coffee man i reflect truly have to reflect on just how fortunate you know our lives are because you know more business more problems man more money more problems there's no way to get around that biggie smalls had it right man yeah it's just it's just the truth and so then uh i come inside we uh, have a uh, infrared sauna in our house because if you you know listen to some of the studies around what that does in the releasing of toxins and certain things, so I sit in there. Um, went to a Buddhist temple about 10 years ago and a crazy monk by the name of Kadam Lucy uh, changed my life, man. And uh, you know when you said risk tolerance, how you make decisions, I think decisions are best made with a neutral mindset. Not too much excitement, yeah. not too much anger, and so I do a 10 minute contemplation meditation out of 32 meditation handbooks. And then I open up my computer. I only share this story because I think every single person who finds success needs to get something done first in the morning before they ever open their computer. And it's huge. You got something on that? Yeah. Tell me the, the 10 minutes on, uh, you said 32 books of what? Say, say that again. They have something called the, the Guided Handbook 32 Meditations. And uh, you want me to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, if not, so, I'm just going to go, I'm going to write it down right now and go look it up later anyways. So you sure. might as well tell me and I'll share it with the audience. I love it, man. I'm not preaching spirituality here. You don't, I, dude, I don't, I don't care. Right? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Sensitive times, Kevin. You know what I mean? You got to be careful. Here's the deal, man. I am the most least politically correct person on the face of the planet and I like fall, like I fly in the face of all things politically correct. Love it. The meditation, uh, the guided meditation handbook is what it's called. And it's gonna be a funky one because it's produced at, you know, uh, Tharpa centers all over the world, right? Meditation okay. centers. 
probably not Barnes and Noble. But uh, there's a difference between what they teach. You know, it's almost like uh, Eastern yoga. You do yoga as a preparatory practice to get your body ready to sit, to contemplate and meditation. And so a lot of the meditation they have are two types. One of them is obviously like all the apps most of Western civilization has, which is how to even just calm your mind. But eventually then what you need to do is you actually need to contemplate on something if you want to reprogram your mind. Meaning if you struggle with scripts, you can be as optimistic as you want, but if you actually can start working on seeing yourself say the script, you know what I mean? Feeling the nerves of calling the person. So it's a deeper level of contemplation, almost cognitive therapy. Good example I'll give you is I had to learn how to not be worried about my, my wife's life anymore. And, you know, at a certain point you have to meditate for 10 minutes, not to sound morbid, but that you may die today or your loved one may die today. Hold that feeling deep, actually experience the thought of it. And then guess what? You start doing that on a daily basis. Eventually, you're not worried about losing your car, right? You're not worried about the deal that died. And that's more of a meditation around how to let go of attachment to material possessions. Sounds a little interesting, pretty deep. If anybody wants, just so you know, I'll give my cell phone number. I'll give my email. If anybody wants to talk meditation, I will open up my book for anybody because I credit it to the entire reason for any level of a happy marriage, happy business, happy life. And without meditation, man, I don't know where I would have ever gotten to, but I mean the contemplation meditation, not the foo-foo, you know, hey, I'm just going to calm my mind and listen to an app. I really mean reprogramming it. So hope that helps, but that's kind of the, the morning aspect. And then uh, meetings, you know, so I start, start the mornings off. Sometimes I have, I have about 13 uh, clients that I coach nationwide for Tom Ferry, um, some big businesses. And I love it, man. These are some of the best people in the world. So by coaching them, you know, 30 minutes, no more than an hour a day. Do I do, you know, two people a day. I start my day off with them. I'm learning about what's happening in the LA luxury market. You know what I mean? How are they being impacted with COVID? Okay. Oregon, where are we at? Mesquite, Nevada, Remax agent running a re I get to learn so much about these brokerage models, you know? So again, why we talk about, Hey, you're getting grinded by EXP and you know, usually man, you see our benefits. I see them. I'd be there. I talk to my, my coach, Andy Nazaroff all the time. He's EXP team leader, right? I'm just like, I'd be there. My margins are just really high. We've got a lot of amazing people and maybe one day I'm never discounting anything, but right now, just keep plugging along in the businesses. And, you know, these are the things that work. And my whole goal always, and I shared this with you at uh, Vegas, right? If it was, anything was better for our people, that's where we'll take our company. And the yeah. second the people ask for it, the second the value. So I have some coaching clients that helps me get in the right mindset. This might sound boring, but we have a morning brokerage meeting and a morning pipeline review every day, mortgage company, real estate. Not a ton of fun. It's at 8.30 a.m. And all the agents are on there every single day. And that is just when you look at a virtual work from home you know, workplace, 8.30 meeting, five days a week. And then back to anything you decide to do, you have to track and measure everything. So we measure engagement at our office. Uh, I think you put a report out long, long time ago, Inman, and it talked about three things to know if you got a team member leaving your brokerage. Yeah, I wrote that about was a month or two ago, yeah. <laughs> yep, second one was team meetings, right? And it's just, it's so true, man. We track and measure engagement. And there's a direct correlation to every single agent in our office to production, as well as engagement in the values and the things we offer, you know, as a team, and as a brokerage. And so, you know, have the 8.30 meeting, 10 a.m. is a mortgage pipeline review, most of the time, my other business, you know, partner runs that, but most of it's meetings with our employing broker, meetings with the managing broker team, meeting with the productivity agents. I wish I could say it sounds sexy, but for most people, it is something that is very boring, disciplined, and simple. And that's where we find the most success is in the consistency and the relevancy to what we're doing. It also builds trust in the from twos or the predictability to our business. So just if I was going to break it down, morning mindset, then I go into, you know what I mean? Something that makes me feel better before I get into my two, you know, highest and best use of hours. So that's the coaching clients, Tom Ferry, 
Then I go do two hours of my most effective meetings. Then I have, you know, emails time blocked out. Then I've got podcasts with Kevin, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I got workout in between. So it's just hour by hour. And that's one of the things that I learned, you know, not in real estate, but by the accountability of my bosses in corporate America is when and where is that in your schedule? And if it's not in your schedule and it's not getting done, if it can't be tracked and measured, then it's a thought instead of something that you know, or a stat or a fact. And HR companies require you to give those if you're going to do anything, right? You have to have the documentation of the real tracking and measuring of the result. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man. You just, you nailed so much value right there. Um, and you know, you said, yeah, it's boring and not the part that people want to hear about, but to, listen, I've, I've interviewed a lot, not just interviewed, but I've also had the opportunity just to get to know people uh, who run amazing businesses and it all looks sexy and it looks fun and cool and all this other stuff. But every time when you peel back the layer, would you find out is there some really boring ass repetitive things that happen every single day, but yeah. they're, they're important, right? They, and they have to happen. And when you do those things consistently, effectively over time, you build yep. a really big business, no matter what business you're in, whether you're running no. a big brokerage like you, or you're running a, just a solo agent, you know, operation, it's doing those boring tasks day in, day out that really build over time. You know, and the other part with it, as I didn't talk about where am I failing in my schedule though, and it's the same place that agents, no matter what you do, there's going to be at least an hour or two of conversations and contacts you have to make every day. And the one um, just announced on our Tuesday meeting was that, hey, coming after COVID. So Tom talks about before COVID, during COVID, after COVID, right? BC, DC, AC, right? Our AC, I want to I wanna be a leader who leads with love. When I mean by love, I mean recognition. Who leads with commitment. What I mean by commitment is high accountability. Okay, no more not tracking and measuring numbers. No more not leading by facts. And the last one was greatness. But what I mean by greatness is I mean results. You know, when you look at the average amount of transactions per agent, that's a result. When you look at, you know, the, the conversion rate, that's a result. And so those three things and the one man that just anytime I'm on anything, I just want to thank the people that are following our vision more than anything, clients, customers, the agents. And the one thing, man, that I'm failing in though, in that schedule is more consistency to at least an hour a day of letting people know I love them recognizing them for a phenomenal behavior. And guess what? That's all prospecting is for an agent to client. Just contact is care, right? And so if I can leave anything, it's just that two hours. Because if you master it, I had to do that to sell 100 listings. I had to do that to be a great team leader. But as I've exited more, that's the greatest area of opportunity is in that absence. How do I start making sure those most impactful hours, that power base of people you know what I mean? Who really grow your business. Never forget that you love them. Never forget that you see them doing phenomenal things and moving down the progression of being a very, very good real estate agent, loan officer, you know, processor, admin, sell insight, sales agent, marketing, anything. So hopefully that helps in the failure too, though. Right? Yeah, dude. Um, that's, that's awesome. You just shared, you just shared a ton right there. Um, let's do this man winding down. I want to make sure that I finish with a uh, last question, uh, a particular last question before we do that, anything that we missed that we should have covered that I should ask you or, uh, that we should just make sure we talk about. No, I, I just leave three things with people. One, make sure that you're building a brand. You have benefits, you have your record, you have an attitude, you have a niche, and then a design to really bring all that together. Build a brand, right? Make sure that that brand has how you sell yourself, your company, and really the, the processes or the products or the things that you're trying to do. And in that, as long as you have a mission statement, core values, because this is just such a game that pulls you so many areas. And the recruiters, man, they're so damn good, right? And most of the world just needs to stick it out, you know what I mean? Or when they commit somewhere, know that I'm going to adopt everything within that brand. So then that way, right, I can start seeing the momentum. I just hope people know it's not supposed to be a roller coaster. It's supposed to be hard as hell, 
but eventually once you got it right you're supposed to see this progression to where both real estate and life starts getting better and then the last part is just any single person from a prospecting perspective is acknowledge respond pivot arp transition if there's one thing that we didn't cover just look it up it's called arp it came from the mortgage industry it flows into everything but how do you keep in conversation with people and not necessarily do this you know lack of conversation you know what i mean but actually more interrogation which is not what anybody wants hopefully it's not when anybody ever feels like they get on a podcast man and so hopefully i could just leave people with those two things make sure you learn the the, the acronym ARP knowledge respond pivot in your conversation and then really make sure that you're growing a company or a brand because that's how you'll make it to the 10 percent that you know unfortunately uh is our track record as an industry right and the goal has always been how do we make that number 20 how do we make that number 30 and i think that's any company's initiative right is how to curve turnover how to get more people successful so yes what questions do we got to to close it down so and you may have covered part of it already and, and that's okay just say so but if not um so one of my favorite questions is what are your top three pieces of advice for kicking ass just in general business life whatever but someone comes to you and says hey man i just i want to kick more ass what are your top three pieces of advice for them schedule actually it's just called plan schedule and then execution meaning accountability it really is man kicking ass is a cool term but if you're gonna kick ass, you also have to take an ass whooping. And I was listening to somebody say this the other day. It said, hey, you know what? The bad news for everybody is every, most of the world's gonna survive COVID. And what's happening right now is that without accountability in your life, the planet has a funny way of whooping your ass. And right now the planet's giving an ass whooping to a lot of people who lacked accountability. Yeah. So the only reason why I say that is create a plan, man. And I think great people talk about it, but it has to be rooted in a why. It can't be to make money. Making money is a byproduct of having an amazing plan. And then in that plan, when and where in your schedule, live, die, buy a schedule for everything in life. Date with your daughter, sex with your wife, making, I mean everything. I know that sounds lame. People are like, what? You got that scheduled? But I promise you, there's some husbands and wives like, schedule me up. <laughs> I want it, right? So I'm just saying. And I use that as, as an explicit, you know what I mean? But then the last part is, and then hold yourself accountable to the tracking and measuring of it because the greatest relationship I found in coaching, and this was one that I had to be taught because accountability is not natural for me. I don't like managing things, but the reality is the intimacy you have with the person and their results is the greatest relationship you can have as a coach. Just knowing their numbers, sticking to the truth, greatness is in results the rest is the story or the drama that we got get caught up on which you're gonna care about but ultimately it's not in the plan it's not in the schedule so look man let's go back to that so hopefully that helps yeah dude that was solid justin um where do people find you any whoever someone wants to get in touch with you whether it's about the guided meditations or just kind of learn more about what you're doing maybe coaching or just kind of see your uh just kind of watch you from afar what's the best way for people to catch up with you yep they'll see everything justin martin on my public figure page is the best one you've got justin martin but spell with the e j-u-s-t-e-n-m-a-r-t-i-n um and then ultimately those are just the two instagrams justin martin 5280 um, and, uh, I gotta start using this ram more. So you'll, you'll notice I'll start posting more stories. Right on. We'll, uh, we'll link to that Facebook and Instagram here in the uh, podcast show notes and, uh, highly recommend anybody. If you're not already familiar with Justin, get familiar with him, follow him. Uh, dude is awesome. One of my favorite people that I've met in the last couple, really in the last couple of years, but, uh, thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate the time you spent today. Me too. Appreciate what you and Fred do. Keep delivering content. I'm going to give you a plug. Hey, you got a referral. All right. Send them to both of these guys because they kick ass. They'll take care of your people. And ultimately, that's how we keep giving badass content, right? Absolutely. All right, my <laughs> man. I, dude, you're the best. <laughs> Love that. Love you, bro. Uh, right back at you, dude. Love you, man. And looking forward uh, to connecting again very soon. Cool. Appreciate right. you. Talk, talk to you later.